All righty. The next match was the long-awaited contest between formerly Mr. Nice Guy and now human wrecking machine Bronson Reed against our old friend Seth Franklin Rollins. And we must have, we have, you especially, you've become a fan of the chaos and the, uh, the, the antisocial behavior and destruction that the human Godzilla film that Bronson Reed is has been wreaking across the yeah. WWE universe, right? He's like an aggressive Jerry Blackwell with bad tattoos. I like it. <laughs> he needs Jerry Blackwell's afro. The curly f***ing whole thing. Well, it actually, it, it encompassed both sides of black because he had the beard. So both sides of his head or top and bottom or whatever. It was just like a giant array of hair around his circular around his face, wasn't it? I like the two when he wore the uh, bumblebee outfit. <laughs> it's just a yellow and black. He looked like a giant bumblebee. Yes, and that well, because that's what the boys fucking call you. Know where that came from, right? That was an inside rib. It was a get. Didn't he wear a mask and actually wrestle as the Bumblebee once? Well, yes, because in Knoxville, Southeastern, he lost a loser leave town match and came back as the Canadian Bumblebee in a fucking black and yellow outfit. But the boys said in his outfit he looked like a Bumblebee. He was so short and so round, and but he could fly, so he looked like a Bumblebee. Like Bronson Reed, he could fly. Like Bronson Reed. Anyway, they had, because this was a grudge match and uh, blood was bad and tempers were flaring, they did a jump start in the owl way. But here, this I started keeping track because this was the third match right on the show. It started an hour and 20 minutes into this pay-per-view, the third match. And that was not all match time. Not by any stretch of the imagination. So anyway, they jump start in the aisle, they fight to the stage, they fight down the ramp. When they get to the ring, Seth rolls in the ring so he can dive back out. And I'm like, what the f this is starting like an AEW match. What the fuck? And then Bronson Reed lawn darted. Seth over the barricade into the timekeeper's pit into a chair and then ran him into the stairs and then rolled him in the ring and the referee rang the bell to start the match. Were we just talking about that last week in AEW? That they've come up with this thing that they're just all now doing like it's part of the rules that that the guys can come out and drop like Agent Orange and nuclear missiles on each other before the bell rings, but then once that they get both get in the ring, as long as they still have 50% of their appendages attached to their body, the referee rings the bell and starts the match like, okay, we're starting now. When did this start happening? I don't know, but I was at the WCW show at the Paramount in 1993. An infamous disaster of a show where Ric Flair couldn't make it. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was a disaster of a show. But Ron Simmons... Was, was he trying, by the way? Apparently he couldn't make it because of the weather. He couldn't fly in. But Ron Simmons and Chris Benoit, for like 90 seconds, two minutes, had a wild match around the ringside. And then the New York State Athletic Commission stopped it. Can't go on anymore. It's too wild. Now instead they start the match. And then they get in the ring... Uh, but uh, they started hot here in the ring. Bronson Reed missed a splash off, or did a splash off the top, but missed the second one. And then Seth hit his curb stomp and got a two count. So I was like, what the fuck? Where do they go from here? Because they've been fighting all outside the ring and around the ring, and now they get in and trade their finishes, and they've just started. And so then they did shit back and forth, and then Reed started getting some heat. And he got heat on Seth, and then Seth kind of made a comeback, but it had slowed way down, because it had to. They started at 100 miles an hour. And then they went back and forth where Bronson Reed would take back over and power bomb or Death Valley Driver, get a two-count or superplex off the top rope and get a two-count. And, but I guess the problem I had was that they started 
it's hard to start at 100 miles an hour with a guy that weighs 350 pounds and expect the rest of it not to be 25 miles an hour. But then finally, Reed picked up the stairs and he went to hit Seth with him, but Seth tried to clip Bronson Reed's leg, but he came from the front and kind of slapped his thigh. And then Reed kind of went down to his knees and fell face first into the stairs that he was holding. And it didn't look good because it's hard to do. And also, I think he got either tatered himself with that or when Seth gave him the stomp on the stairs, busted his eye open. And then he rolled him in the ring and gave him a curb stomp. And then he went to the top and gave him another curb stomp. One, two, three. So again, it slowed down. And then the, the whole finish with the face into the stairs. I don't, did you, it didn't translate because there, he didn't want to fucking hurt Bronson Reed by clipping his leg out from under him really, but he was coming from the front and that's harder to do, and Reed had that weight over his head. So the point is, is can it bleh? And then three curb stomps, and the fans loved it. The fans loved everything here. But I don't know whether this was just the greatest thing ever or not. Am I mellowing in my old age? I mean, it was a lot for their big match. It was a grudge match. I guess it'll continue because they had the little bit of a face-off at the end. Good visual of Bronson Reed having the blood. I think it was from the stomp on the stairs. At least that's what I thought watching it. I don't know. I mean, I, I guess the surprising thing is Rollins going over cleanly. What do you think of that? Well, I mean, in modern-day wrestling and modern-day WWE... Pretty much either the heel wins or the baby face wins. Almost everything is clean in some fashion or another. Maybe somebody distracts somebody and makes them look like an idiot. And then the other guy just hits his finish. But a lot of this thing, yeah, I'll just hit him with my finish three or four times in a row. And then the fans will cheer when I get the pin. Uh, eh. 